Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Are isopods the best pet invertebrates? Well, today we'll look at the pros and cons of keeping isopods, and we'll also discuss their housing and care requirements, and then you can come to your own conclusion. The first advantage of keeping isopods is that they can serve as an excellent cleanup crew for a variety of reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates, from tortoises to toads to tarantulas, and many, many more. That's actually the reason I got into keeping isopods. I obtained them as a cleanup crew for my geckos. And they will clean up waste, excess food, they will clean up bits of shed skin, dead plant material. They are really amazing. But isopods are so much more than a cleanup crew. The second advantage of keeping isopods is the beauty and variety of color and pattern that they offer. There are many types of naturally occurring isopods that are a far cry from the normal gray that many people associate with uh, you know, common pill bugs and things like that. And not only are there naturally occurring varieties that are very, very beautiful, there are many selectively bred morphs that are not only beautiful, but they're increasing. Both wild types and uh, selectively bred types of isopods are appearing all the time in the hobby as they're being discovered and as they're being produced. Another pro to keeping isopods is that they are extremely low maintenance. As long as you ensure that they won't dry out, you can easily leave a colony of isopods alone for a week without any worries that they will have any problems. They'll be fine. There are quite a few other pets that would not do so well under those conditions, so I consider isopods pretty low maintenance. Another excellent point when you're considering keeping isopods as pets is that they are very inexpensive to buy. You can buy a starter colony of most of the fairly common species for somewhere between 10 and 15 US dollars. And that's 10 to 12 isopods, enough to get yourself a colony that will continue to grow. Um, not really very expensive at all. Of course, there are some that are much cheaper than that. And there are others that are more expensive, maybe the more exotic varieties that are just entering the hobby. But uh, yeah, in general, they're pretty reasonable. Another pro to keeping isopods is that they are cheap and easy to house. You can take a plastic container. This is a six quart Sterilite tub. And in some cases, you don't need to modify it at all. In other cases, you just add um, minimal to maximal ventilation, depending on the type of isopod you're keeping. If you're keeping, for example, some armadillidium isopods or some of the giant Spanish porcelio isopods that need things a little drier with a little less humidity, then you would drill larger holes in there, cover them with some fine weave fabric, and you're good to go. For other isopods that don't need so much ventilation, maybe just drill a few small holes, cover those with the fine weave fabric, and again, uh, the enclosure is ready. In terms of what goes inside the enclosure, that is a little bit more complicated, but it's still pretty easy to do. It can be as simple as a layer of moistened coconut fiber and then put some dry fallen hardwood leaves on top. I usually make my own substrate using one part organic compost, one part alder wood pellets that have been soaked, and these are sold for use with barbecue grills, and then one third fallen hardwood leaves from my own backyard. I then sprinkle in some crushed eggshell. So that uh, recipe is a little bit more complicated, but it works really well. And there are other recipes that you can uh, use. There are even places you can buy ready-made isopod substrate, and I'll put some links down in the description. You probably also want to add a hide. I like to use slabs of cork bark, but you can also use slabs of, say, oak or maple or other non-toxic tree bark, and the isopods will tend to like to hide under that. As far as the enclosure goes, that's pretty much it. Another plus to keeping isopods as pets is that they are cheap and easy to feed. The substrate that I described uh, just now is actually a large proportion of their food. They'll eat the leaves and the compost and, and the wood and so on. You can actually keep isopods without any other additional food, but to maximize their uh, growth rate and the reproduction, you probably want to provide some supplemental food. Now, this can take the form of bits of fruits and vegetables that you probably already have around the house. In terms of vegetables that they like, uh, sweet potato is a great one. They also like carrots. Um, they'll take a lot of different leafy greens. They will eat green beans. They will eat peas and many others. In terms of fruits, things like apple, banana, and orange are great. Mango, they'll eat quite a few different things. It's just important to make sure that if you're not offering organic produce that you make sure to rinse and or peel 
them very well because pesticides can be deadly to your isopods and it's also important to make sure that you don't put too much in at a time and that you check on it and if it starts to get moldy that you remove it. Most isopods benefit from the addition of high protein items to their diet. For that purpose I feed them some fish food pellets once or twice a week and an additional feeding of rapashi bug burger and sometimes morning wood to their diet. I will put links in the description to all of these items. As far as food goes, that's just about it. Uh, in terms of water, it's important to make sure that you moisten a part of the enclosure, say one quarter to one half of the enclosure, depending on the species you have. Some like it drier, some like it a little more moist. But if you keep that part of the enclosure moist, not soaked, so if you pick up a, a handful of the substrate and squeeze it in your hands, uh, it should feel moist, but you shouldn't be squeezing drops of, of water out. If, if you reach that balance on you know, one quarter to half of the enclosure, as I mentioned, and then the other half is drier, um, you should be fine. They don't actually need to drink from a water bowl or anything like that. They can get their moisture from the substrate. Another big advantage to keeping isopods as pets is that they are communal. In other words, they can live in groups of their own species very, very easily. That is their natural state, and they will not harm each other. The worst they'll ever do is maybe have a little squabble over food, but nothing that harms them. You can keep the babies with the adults, um, and they do really well. In terms of mixing species, that can sometimes work, but generally one of those species will end up outcompeting the other over time, even if it takes a year or two. So I don't recommend mixing isopod species, but you can definitely keep large groups of the same species together. That kind of leads into our next pro of keeping isopods, and that is that they're easy to breed yet manageable. Now what I mean by easy to breed is that if you keep males and females together in the proper enclosure, they will reproduce. It's not that hard. The uh, females will uh, produce a pouch on their underside, lay the eggs in that pouch, and then when they are ready, the monkey or the offspring will come out of the pouch and they are pale, but basically replicas of the adults in all of the respects and they'll darken up as they get older into the adult coloration. Um, they are able to eat the same foods that the adults eat right away and the adults will not harm them. So very easy reproductive process. In terms of manageable, what I mean by this is they're not going to reproduce extremely fast. Now, some isopods are definitely going to reproduce much more quickly than others, but there are other invertebrates that people keep that will reproduce much, much more quickly than isopods. If you keep an isopod colony, you're probably not going to need to worry about uh, trying to find homes for all of them um, right away. But even if you do get to the point where you have too many, you'll probably find someone who uh, wants some isopods as well. Another great thing about keeping isopods is that they are safe to handle. They're not going to sting, bite, pinch, or spray anything on you, unlike some other uh, invertebrates that people keep. They're very, very simple to handle. Now, there are a couple of concerns when you're handling them, but they're not in terms of your safety. They're in terms of the safety of the isopod. Now, isopods can be damaged if they are squished or you know squeezed, so you have to be careful about that. You wouldn't want them to drop onto a hard floor. That could cause them some damage. Uh, potentially, and also the isopods are sometimes very fast. Certain types are very, very fast, and so when you're handling them, you want to make sure they do, don't just scuttle off your hand and launch themselves out into the space and get lost on your floor. But other than that, not a big issue, and most isopods are pretty easy to handle and uh, move slowly enough that you can uh, deal with that pretty easily. Now the last pro that I would like to mention when uh, keeping isopods is that they have an almost magical appeal both for children and adults. A lot of people feel this way and I'm not even sure why even though I feel it myself. Uh, a lot of people who are very uncomfortable with keeping invertebrates in general are actually just fine with isopods. So if you are the kind of person who would like to keep invertebrates but you find that people you live with are uncomfortable with the idea you just might try isopods. Uh, they, they may feel just fine about it. And now on to the few disadvantages of keeping isopods. Some species of isopods are pretty secretive, so when you open the container you may not see a whole lot, especially when you're first starting the colony and you don't have very many in there, and you might wonder, oh, where are my isopods? What happened? Well, certain isopods are more prone to bury themselves than others, and in the initial stages of setting up a colony, you know, it's just going to look more empty. But as the colony grows, you'll find that the isopods tend to become more active 
and uh, you'll see a lot more of them and certain species are very very active as well some great species if you want something that's very active include Porcelio lavis um, Porcelio ornatus yellow dot and any of the powders the powder blues powder oranges you know those are all really really active and visible um, zebra pill bugs are another good choice Another disadvantage, and this only applies to a few species that some of the newer or more exotic uh, isopods on the market can be pretty expensive. Some are up to $30 each, and if you want to start a colony with 10, you know, that can get pretty pricey. But as again, as I mentioned before, most of them are much, much cheaper. Most isopods individually are a dollar or two, you know, and uh, so you can get a colony for um, 10 to $15, something like that. It's really not bad at all. Maybe the worst disadvantage of keeping isopods is that under certain conditions, depending on the enclosure that you use and various other things, they may attract fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are tiny uh, flying insects about the size of a fruit fly, actually a little smaller and thinner than a fruit fly, that are attracted to soil-like substrates. Now, if you have a tight sealing lid on your container and you have um, some ventilation holes drilled into it that are covered with a fine weave cloth, probably don't have anything to worry about but if you have containers that are not well sealed sometimes the fungus gnats will be attracted and come into the container now the good news is that there are things you can do about it and one of the best things you can do about it is just let your isopods proliferate as they breed they tend to outcompete the fungus gnats until you don't really notice them anymore another measure that i like to take to combat fungus gnats is to add springtails to the enclosure Springtails serve as a cleanup crew for isopods, just as they do with amphibians, reptiles, and so on. They specialize in eating fungi, just like fungus gnats do, so they can help to outcompete them. If you want to learn more about springtails, where to obtain them, or how to culture them, just check out the links in the description. So those tips ought to help protect your colonies from fungus gnats. If you have as many isopods as I do and you're always starting new colonies, it might be a little trickier, so you may have to look into some other options for control. And I would say that that is far and away the biggest con, and if you're careful with the types of enclosures that you choose, you may not need to worry about it at all. So there we go. We've talked about the pros and cons of isopods, and in the process we've discussed enough about the housing and care that you can get an idea whether isopods are right for you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are isopods the best pet invertebrates? Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets of different types. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. I want to show you something. While I was editing this footage, I noticed a really interestingly patterned powder blue isopod. See it right there in the middle of the screen? It's kind of got a pied coloration. I've heard of these, but I didn't know I had any. Unfortunately, trying to find this isopod is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack full of really fast-moving needles.